I am Raymond Moody, and these are my thoughts on visionary encounters with the spirits of departed loved ones. It is a common human experience after the death of a loved one for people to have some sort of significant message from the departed person. And uh, there are several variants of this. Some people will say that in the middle of the day, when they're in full waking consciousness, the apparition of the departed person will just appear in their home. Other people will say that they experience the apparition of the deceased loved one while they are lying in bed on the verge of sleep, not asleep, but kind of in that drifty situation. They see the apparition standing often at the foot of the bed. And a third type in which people will say that uh, they have to call this a dream because it was they were asleep when it occurred, but that it didn't have the quality of a dream. It actually seemed to be a visitation with a departed loved one. So those are the three main ways of um, you know, people receiving communications from dead relatives. In our world, this happens spontaneously, but in the ancient Greek and Roman worlds, there were ways of actually bringing these experiences about. So they had institutions where people would go to have visionary encounters with their departed loved ones. Burial sites have been found from 40,000 years ago or longer, which showed that even at that time, people uh, felt that there was another world. Um, now, so there's really no way of putting a precise date on when these things came about. It seems to be part of human nature. But even in the earliest writings, uh, that we have and the writings of the Greek civilization, for example, there are accounts of people seeing apparitions and so on. It's, it's part and parcel of human nature. In 1991, I saw my deceased grandmother as vividly as I have seen any other person. I felt her presence. I heard her voice. Uh, and to this day, I'm still startled by that. I mean, I can't deny my experience. It was completely real to me. When people have an apparition of the deceased, one of the things that they often describe is how natural it seems. I think if you're just sitting abstractly and saying that, uh, Aunt Ruth had a visit from Aunt Jane last night that you would think that that must be something totally extraordinary and out of the order of anything we experience. But the, what people say is, no, this is completely natural. The naturalness of it is, is one thing that people experience. And I can talk about that from my own experience that I realized full well that my grandmother was dead. And I guess I could have abstractly realized that there's something very paradoxical in that situation. But in terms of the encounter that I had with my grandmother, it was completely natural because number one, it was like all her neuroses were gone. It's, it's like she acknowledged them in some way, that that's how I used to be, with a little bit of humor in her eyes, but also that that's something she left behind. And so it was just, I was talking with my grandmother and she was dead and I was completely awake. And another very odd thing about it was that when I looked at her, she looked like a, just a physical person, except that there was a light just around her, not like a light that I would experience here, but it's very vibrant em energy emanation. And that, in a way that I can't very describe, I can't describe very well. It was like she was indented 
right? That she was pushed back from the physical framework in a way, and that that's what I was seeing as this energy line. And such that in our conversations, she revealed something to me that I had not known about, but makes perfect sense. It really made my life fit together. I, I mean, there's no way now of verifying this, but I mean, I, I just woke up and whoa, yes, that must be true. And so it happened a couple of times during this encounter that unconsciously, almost just like you would want to go hug your grandmother. Not everybody likes to be hugged, but my grandmother was a person who hugging was okay with her. But each time when I would approach her like this instinctively, whereas throughout the rest of this, she was very verbal. When I would lean forward to hug her, she would throw her hands up like this, stand back, and instead of saying something, would just nod her head like that. What does that mean? I have no idea. I don't know how to make any inference about that. Uh, I, I know that I was in a complete state of uh, conscious awareness. I wasn't under the influence of any kind of extraneous compound. Uh, so yeah, I've had an apparition of my grandmother, which I'm still trying to process almost 30 years later. I have talked over the years with hundreds of people with apparitions of the deceased to describe to me, and I can't find any common feature in them. I mean, there's people of every different kind of personality types, uh, male and female, there's any kind of socioeconomic group you can think of, and that people who haven't had such experiences are very anxious to push it away or not to think about it. And uh, again, I'm in a situation where I just can't understand why some people don't like to face the reality and unknowableness of the world. To me, it's just a wonderful part of the world that it's uh, so mysterious and I can't figure it out. And to me, that can't be anything other than fear. And the hundreds of people I've talked with, with apparitions of the deceased, there just aren't any common factors that stand out. These are people from every walk of life and uh, you know, every educational level and, uh, and all kind of equally astonished by what happened to them and inspired. And uh, so I would be really surprised to say that there is some if somebody were to find that there is some unified feature of all people who have apparitions, it certainly is not consonant with my experience. I got to admit, and it's something I'm uncomfortable about myself with, but it's the way I am, is that I probably am too harsh on my assessment of people who believe things or think things, right? And I know this is unpleasant to me in a way, but I can honestly tell you when I first heard about these things like um, hauntings and so on, my attitude was that, well, this is an histrionic person and so on. Well, now, had a good friend who spent much of his life investigating hauntings. And he was just a really good, wonderful guy. And in 1985, I think it was August of 1985, we were at the American Psychological Association uh, meeting in Washington, and we were giving presentations. And so my friend Bill said to me, well, Raymond, I'm going up to New Jersey to investigate a haunting. And he said, like, would you come along to assist? And I said, well, sure, I'll, I'll be happy to. Uh, and um, he said that his, the way his method was that I couldn't know anything about the haunting before I got there. 
right? So we didn't discuss it on the way up. We just, you know, the routine was that I, when we arrived at the house, the family would be gone to another location and nobody else would be there. And Bill would go to the other location and interview them about the occurrences, okay? And that my assignment was to sit there in the house and just record anything that I thought of. And so as God is my witness, what happened was this presence came through. And it was not that I saw anything with my eyes, but I could describe this as a visual experience. But even though I knew it wasn't coming through my eyes, and I also knew it wasn't imagination. This is, this is not imagination. It was kind of electrical, for want of a better term. And when this person came through, my sense was of an old man. Okay. And when this thing would take steps, in my mind, not like as an auditory exactly, but as a sort of halfway thing, was like a whoom, 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 whoom. And it went through like this, like a semicircle around me over here. Now here is number one, I am a chicken. I am terrified of a lot of stuff. I wasn't one bit scared. This is, and maybe it was because I was there as an investigator and I wasn't trying to scare myself with a haunted house story. So then the next thing that happened was this little girl, I mean, I saw a very vivid image of a little girl's face about the age of 12, blonde hair and a blue something, not a dress, but, and it was like she was tr trying to expel me or something like to push me out. Right? Now, little time passed and then I heard what's coming from upstairs like footsteps on the upper floor. And again, I mean, this sounds so out of character for a chicken, but I just went up there and saying nothing, nothing, okay. Now, after a while, Bill came home. And let's put it this way, this, the family situation was totally different from what I had imagined. Number one, the woman who owned the house, her, her husband was a very eminent neuroscientist whose work that I had studied in medical school, number one. Number two, the other people in the family were very distinguished in their professions. I probably shouldn't be too revealing, but the just a very distinguished artist. Okay. And then there were the now, now is we get to talking about what they had been experiencing. And the experience was of an old man and of a girl about 12 years old. That that's what they had been seeing and hearing. And there was a conflict between these two. Now, as the story unfolds, when did these disturbances start? They started a day after the younger woman and the family filed for a divorce. Now, you see, I am not a believer in paranormal things, but I because I don't know what belief means, but I can describe to you my experience and swear to God that that's what I experienced. And then I hear from other people who've investigated similar things and I have no idea what this is, but I can tell you that that was my honest experience that I went through. And, and I should also say that the disturbance between the older man and the young girl exactly reflected the dynamics of the family, which had brought about the divorce. Now, what in the name of God is going on here? It's like, because a psychiatrist really, I guess to be a psychiatrist in the whole sense of the thing, that you have got to be taking account, not just of this one level of reality, but of other levels of reality that we can hardly even imagine.